Mr. Medicare's throwing a nice little birthday bash for Boogie2988, Boogie1488, after all the bullshit that he's pulled for the past couple weeks. Uh, Boogie2988 has been, has been exposed for a couple different lies. So, he has lied about cancer. He's lied about uh, being an abuse victim. So, let's get this going here. So, that way you guys got audio once it does start. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's been generally a terribly fucking big piece of shit, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I have a personal hatred towards him now because the stuff that he faked, uh, actually involves something that I have personally. Yeah, God, we've had, a so we had Boogie's Boulder stream, which was fantastic. Um, now they've, they've gone to, uh, Locale Live is live tonight they're fucking they're doing the punishment for boogie which is got he got like liar down here in his fucking facial hairline which is kind of bullshit to me I, it should have been right here right under his fucking mouth so that way everybody knows where the lies are coming from <coughs> but uh yeah no keem let him get away with it putting it down here and, and they're like oh my god it's in such a big font it really isn't i mean it'll be easily covered up by a beard Boogie can grow a beard. We've already seen it. So I don't doubt that he will hide it like a pussy. Um, so I, I don't even think it's a justful punishment. But apparently, like, Keemstar's already talking about that's punishment enough. We'll let him back on the show, which I think is total fucking horseshit. And I hope, hopefully, you you agree with that. But, uh, yeah, other than that, um, let's see. So we had that stream come out, then we had the stream come out after where they kind of were talking about what to do with Boogie. They've done four different streams at this point. And then uh, recently, Mr. Medicare sat down and went uh, point by point on the Boogie Ultra thread. If you can find it out there, um, I might share it at some point because I'm slowly building up a Boogie file on my own. But uh, there's a lot of shit in there and now they're showing that there's a lot more inconsistencies on not just the cancer stuff. But also with uh, with the stuff involving his sexual abuse and all this and his physical abuse, so it kind of got even shittier. So I I I really have a big fucking dislike for him. So he should be talking here pretty shortly. Well, happy there he is. birthday, Boogie, the big five zero. Ooh, the big five zero. You've made it a long time, especially with that gruesome that gruesome bit of cancer you've got. Oh, must have been an arduous journey to the uh, the 50-year mark. Chad, are you ready to celebrate Boogie's big birthday bash with me? Oh, we've got such a celebration planned as we go over the final Boogie stream. Yesterday was a bit of a, a blowout. But first, let me get so let me let me get to uh, how do I put this? Let me get to some other official business first. Let's get that intro song out of the way. There we go. You may have noticed. They've mistakenly remonetized me for a minute. I doubt that's going to last very long, but I put little puddings and little itty bitty hamsters in for the memberships. Tiny itty bitty little hamsters and puddings. I've heard some people saying, speculating, Keemstar pulled a few strings, got me my channel back. We all know YouTube is really big on the idea of mocking people who've gone through sexual abuse. <laughs> that was the decision. That was the decision at YouTube headquarters. They said, hey, Keem, we need you to get Jim to make fun of Boogie about a traumatic childhood uh, uh, situation that he went through, and then we're going to remonetize him. We're going to let him get all the fucking dollar he dues. But he's got to make that fat motherfucker cry. It's the first thing you got to do. So Keem was like, Eagle has landed. Let's send the message. Signal flares up in the air. Let's do this. Jim, <laughs> Jim, you've got to dunk on him. You've got to come dunk on this fat titted man and make him cry about this terrible tipple abuse. I was a man for the job. I was hired to come in and do it. Let's make it awkward and uncomfortable. That's what Jim's for. Then I got that email. Mission accomplished. We'll call you when we need you. We'll call you when we need you to go after more sex abuse victims, Jim. Checks in the mail. Check is in the mail. That's how corporate America works. That's how YouTube. We all know YouTube is just exactly like that. That's how it's set up. That's how it works. They love edgy shit. They love it. They're so down for it. It's the greatest way to get re-monetized. Actually, it was my Tekken video, a shit post video I put up. Got enough watch hours. Go figure. 
that they they greenlit the channel again. That was a mistake. So please remember, there's Ko-Fi and Cash App. And of course, hats for your hats for more hats. I think my wife has drawn more art and put it up on the store. Ooh. We're a store-funded economy Ooh. over here. So be sure to go over there and check that out. <laughs> well, open that up. We'll what see a what doozy. we got. What a doozy of a couple of weeks. It's been very strange, this Boogie situation. Now, I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with Boogie. I mean, we all are, kind of, right? We know that he exists as a content creator on the internet, and he has for a long time. We saw the uh, spectacle of the cancer debacle unfold in real time. His destiny came in and spanked his ass a little bit. And then we saw that kind of just tailspin over days. That's pretty uh, Over the course of a week, really. As it just kind of built its own momentum. And during that time, all the channels that had been dedicated to calling out Boogie and talking about, you know, all the lies and all the obfusca or obfuscation. I can't say the word. That's pretty cool. I can't say that word. My tongue's not working. All the shenanigans. Let's go with shenanigans. This but is all some this of the bullshit. stuff he made for Boogie. All these channels that really were dedicated to cataloging his bullshit. Felt vindicated. We had old Jackson Clark vindicated. All the A-logs vindicated. Because they said, you know, I don't really trust what's going on. I don't, I don't find it to be honest. And then finally he gets called out on it. And first he denies it after Destiny comes after him. Then the next stream comes. More evidence is presented. And the next stream comes. And finally he breaks. He cracks. He can't take it anymore. He finally admits that it's all bullshit. When he's waving his, his little uh, phone in the air and saying that that was his portal and he had the information on that and his uh, roommates and everybody else could see it and it was all true but he wouldn't send it to anybody. All bullshit. And I think most people picked up on that because who's going to refuse $80,000 to send a single screenshot? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't feasibly make any sense, especially at the tail end of a crypto scam. So it was a, it was a rough fucking patch of uh, uh, days there for the boog <laughs> for the boogeyman. <laughs> crypto scam, get embarrassed by that, fake cancer, get nailed on that. How do we top that? Where does it go from there? Well, I've got a dark, dark stream for you today to celebrate this 50th birthday of Boogies, which is actually his birthday today. He mentioned this like yesterday or the day before. <laughs> We're going to go after one of his other larger claims and just see what we think about it. Because this is something else that apparently is, is a point of contention. And can you really blame people? Boogie's become the, the man that cried wolf. And now everything and anything that he's ever said or done is a suspect. After the crypto scam, after the cancer bullshit, can you really take his word at anything? And so this week has been weird. You have this all kind of playing out, and then people are hesitant. They don't really know when they're watching this, is this real? Is this just like a, a scripted kind of kayfabe thing? I, I couldn't tell you. Maybe, maybe Keemstar and the boys are cooking this back in the lab. I don't know. But the amount of reputational damage that Boogie has taken seems to be fucking extraordinary. Seems to me it'd be a little difficult to kind of pass that off as just a, a giggle for the boys. I still think and some so. Of we it come is to, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, we come to the most uncomfortable subject matter of all. But first, let's kind of ease into it. So, what happened when last we left off on Dragon Ball Z? Well, Boogie got busted for the crypto scam. Boogie <laughs> got busted for the cancer scam, and uh, it wasn't looking good. Keemstar threw him off the show. You know, said, I'm not going to work with you anymore. Allegedly bought him out of his 25% ownership. I guess he had 25% ownership of local live podcast and then demanded his play button, which he actually got. <laughs> he sent it to him. He got his fucking play button. So it was kind of down in the dirt. So, I mean, how do you top that? Where do you go from there? Well, how about freaking the fuck out? So Keemstar, who for some reason pities Boogie more than I think any other person on the internet. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. It's just like he's this little retarded goof, of, you know, goof of a sidekick, maybe. It's just that he just has, like, in his heart, he's got empathy for him. So he's trying to find some way to redeem this guy. And he's going to have him come on the show and talk about other stuff. But Boogie didn't take that so well. Had a little bit of a spaz out. A little bit of a, a tipple twisting, if you will. A bad incident took place. Boogie will probably not be on the show tomorrow. Oh, oh what happened to our Boogie man? What happened? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. A bad incident. I don't know what that could be. That could be anything. <laughs> Last night, I was forced to call the police on Boogie 2988. I'll explain everything tonight. Uh-oh. Call the police on Boogie. He's such a rational, insane person who never spurgs out. Why would you need to call the police on Boogie? What could possibly be going on? 
Well, let's see what the show topic was. Oh, God. <laughs> Buckle up, audience. We're going fucking dark today. Let's take a look. This was has good. been saying throughout the years. There's parts of this that were that good. It different was stories about his abuse, ridiculous. and they do not match up. Now, this is a known liar, a known manipulator, right? And here mm -hmm. people have gone throughout the years, and they got statements. In 2012, he said this. In 2016, he said this. And they don't match. They don't link up. So all this was put together on a screenshot, and I'll show you the screenshot in a minute, but I don't want to derail the show for by looking for it. Um, Uh-oh. Are we going to be talking about childhood abuse? That's a dangerous subject. Chat, can we, can we, get a, what, what would we call it? See, I forgot, like, we're on YouTube now, right? And motherfuckers are scared to make videos where they even say anything like, uh, you can't say the word kill or abuse or gun. Suicide's a no-no. Can't say blood or gore. You never notice how they all fucking said to themselves now? And they put the little, like, um, little asterisks in the word. You ever read a title? It's annoying as fuck. Try to go watch a true crime thing now where they talk about murder and suicide. Words can't be said. But we're going to be talking about childhood abuse, which is like the big boy subject to be talking about. Nice and dark. Really monetizable, isn't it? So can we get a, can we get a CA in chat for childhood abuse? <laughs> can we spam that to thank YouTube for the remonetization? Oh, Jim's been remonetized. Wonder what he's going to talk about. Dark fucking childhood abuse. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Susan. Oh, no, Susan doesn't work here anymore, does she? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes, chat. You have to say you have to say unalive. Can't say suicide. No, unalive is the word. Can, uh, you, there are a lot of words we can't say anymore. Lots of CAs in the chat. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the dollar dues. Uh oh. Uh oh. Probably gonna be getting a little mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny bit upset at me. Okay. So we're headed into Leave dark the gym to blow the monetization initially. Well, let's see where this like, goes right away. Because this was this was Keem's idea. Uh, you know, let's take it from the perspective that Keem is on the level. I know some people are like, oh, this is kayfabe. But let's let's say it's on the level. <laughs> He's really doing like a P.T. Barnum thing with his motherfucker. He's like, hey, Boogie, I want you to come on the show and let's talk about what a fuck up you are with that crypto scam. And then after he gets trounced on that, he's like, hey, Boogie, this guy that hates you and who you hate, Destiny, he's going to come on here and he's going to shit right in your mouth about the faking cancer. And then after that, he's like, hey, hey Boogie, we're going to bring you on because people think you made up the whole I've been abused thing. We're going to make a whole show out of it. And Boogie's just like a whipped puppy dog at this point. <laughs> Keeps just counting those coins. Oh, well, let's see where it goes. This is just a setup. Why would you have to call the police? Well, we're going to find out. And so well, I you can look for it. I want to make a comment if you want to look for it. Okay, go um, ahead. I, I, I question Boogie on this this particular point myself because I never knew he was like in the situation where like he was lying about being, you know, abused as a child. I figured he got hit by his mother. But like I heard that he like had to give his like father a blow job and jerk him off and all this other shit. Oh, family friendly content. Hey, everybody, grab your kids. Set them around the computer. We're watching the local <laughs> live. Let's have Wings run that one back. <laughs> It's exploitable. By clips. the way, the child, by the I way, he got hit by his mother. Be prepared for but some like, of the dumbest shit. Like I heard that he like had to give to his up like father a blowjob and jerk him off and all this other shit. And then we had his. Now come on, what Thanksgiving does that not happen at? I don't know where you prudes grew up, but that was common occurrence. Boogie is way the old too Augustine. over the top at points. Hey with Jimmy this boy, come on over. Daddy's got a turkey leg for you. Dad, that's not a turkey leg. Keep your mouth shut. And sell those fucking hats. His brother on the podcast variation of the show, and his brother stated that his father would come on work late. He mainly drunk. He was never mean to Boogie. And I'm like, this is the same guy that said he made Boogie give him a blowjob? Like, it didn't add up in that situation. I called Boogie on it on a show probably about three or four episodes ago, and he kind of, like, swiped it under the rug. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, this is actually an important thing, because we're, we're going to... I want to show one of the manipulation tactics of Boogie. I mean, this is a dark conversation, don't get me wrong. We'll, we'll touch on that. But I've set this up, and we're going to jump around time-wise rather than going chronologically, because I want you to be amazed at the manipulation tactic you're going to see. And it starts right here. What is Wings telling you? Wings is telling basically everybody, and this is true, that uh, Boogie has gone on, and he's talked about this on other shows. He's familiar with this, or at least kind of has a base knowledge of it. 
Um, you know, Boogie has gone out there a podcast. He's talked about it on streams. He's talked about it in tweets and on blog posts. This is not something that he's kept uh, confidential, okay? Um, he has discussed it. And Wings is bringing up that, well, you know, I heard this and I heard this. Uh, that'll be important for later. But just just remember that bit. Yeah, um, these stories just are not linking up. They're not, people. And so I, I do have the graphic now. I'm going to throw it up on screen. And then I'll be able to tell you how everything got fucking absolutely insane after this. All right, bear with me. Here it is. I'm bringing it over. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Okay. How fantastic is it that he has a <laughs> look at boogies? I don't, I don't know who made this infographic, but they got him smiling. Look at the smiles on his face and big fucking font at the top. Boogie lied about being raped. And it's nothing but quotes. Tons of fucking quotes related to all sorts of shit he said over the years. This is what, this was the subject Gabe wanted to talk about. Imagine being Boogie. Imagine being Boogie sitting at home like, how much worse can it get? God, they've already found out about the crypto scam. They already know about the cancer shit. And you turn on Lolcow Live and there's this your co-host so with his fucking infographic that said you lied about being raped. And there's your big smiling fucking face. This shit face. was so ridiculous. And they even made it with his because, fake teeth one where they, they, they did the Especially skin because so, like, it makes of how like, over the top boogie stick reacts out and everything. Even more? Like, this, this is the oh, dumbest shit ever this shit. episode. Because uh, it is kind of small text. But this is just a graphic that's going around that has all these different statements of Boogie being abused and Boogie's uh, R-word allegations. And if you read through this and take the time, they don't link up. And on this graphic, in the bright red, he talks about his mother's abuse, in the blue, his father, and in the pink, his sister. And they these things don't link up. They just don't. <laughs> so there's a lie somewhere, okay? There is a lie somewhere. There was okay. a fantastic. So that's the show opener. That's how it starts. Fantastic. Why did the comparison I seen made with Boogie? Well, Kim's explaining. I'm going to do a show talking about abuse allegations. Now, the two important things to note as we go forward with this, and it's it is going to be important to kind of show the manipulation. Boogie or um, Wings is already familiar, right? He's like, oh yeah, I've heard this stuff. And then you hear what Kim said. Well, these are quotes from this family member and this family member and this family member, or I'm sorry, about them, right? You know. Um, that he said publicly on different forums or in, you know, different uh, entertainment avenues, podcast blogs, whatever it may be. You'll see why that's important later on. But let's let's jump into an interesting piece to kind of follow this up. Buggy says, I will not talk about my abuse on the show. It's it's too hard for me. Left it at that. Bull, bull fucking shit. Like he, he talks about it all the fucking time. That I, before I even met Boogie, I knew about his abuse. And I, I, Jesus I try Christ. to keep things privately, especially if you do them in private with me. I love the idea of that. I, mean, I know this is dark. Okay. I understand that what we're... I'm going to pause for a second. Okay. So the best fucking co like, uh, comparison that I've seen come out of this shit is that um, <laughs> this is dollar store equivalent of Breaking Bad. You have Boogie is uh, fat Walter White... Uh, with the fucking student who is Desi, and then Keem is Gus. <laughs> and it just, somebody went on and on and on and on, and it was fucking funny. And I just, I saw that. Plus, then I saw that, you know, there was something about fucking Boogie should do, should do, uh, like a family guy, uh, characterization. We're talking about is very dark. But, the humorous side of it is what Wings is saying, based on his previous statement, is before he ever met, the first day he met Boogie, in Wings' head, was the thought, this dude, <laughs> this dude sucked his dad's dick. It's basically what he said. I've heard about it everywhere, is what Wings is saying. Like, the first thought that popped into his head is, oh yeah, you're the guy that sucked your father's cock. Nice to meet you. I do YouTube videos, by the way. But, like, we were driving over to your house the first day we went up to Buffalo, the very first day when you wanted to come, we had like pizza and wings. We had to go pick the food up, right? And Boogie's on the phone in the backseat of the truck with his sister. And his sister is like chewing him out because she's calling him a liar and think this never happened to me and this kind of stuff. But I only had half the conversation. 
because all I could hear is on the stuff. What Wings just said is very, very interesting. Uh, it's even more interesting and important than I think Keem even realized because it plays in again to this, this manipulation tactic that Boogie will use and the lies that he will facilitate. Like, uh, Wings is saying in two things, right? Now we've got two things. Uh, one, he's familiar with these stories because they were out there. Keem said he saw them in the infographic. And then Wings is following that up by basically saying, hey, I was in the car ride coming up. This was, I think, like some party they had over at Keem's house. Uh, when we're in the, the truck, the car, whatever the fuck it is, um, he's having this conversation with a family member talking about, uh, you know, uh, this stuff. And they're upset saying it's not true. It's bullshit. Uh, don't bring it up. Don't bring this subject up. Understandable. Um and, you know, and then Boogie follows that up by saying, this is why they don't want me to talk about it online. Again, understandable. Now, just keep those little nuggets in your head, because prepare to be amazed. <laughs> prepare to be amazed. Oh, and I should say, to set this, let me let me back this up for one second. To set this up, this is later on in the stream. All right. What you saw was at the very beginning of the stream. This is later on. This is about two or three hours into it. And Mood is going to bring up basically what Wings brought up just a second ago, the, the, what you had just seen, what Wings had said. I heard a half a conversation. He was having a conversation with a family member. Okay? Now, Mood is going to bring this back up because when we went into this subject, right, Boogie had said, there are certain things I don't want to talk about. Okay? We get it. That's fine. Uh, there are certain people I want to keep vague or third parties I don't want to bring into it. Okay? That's fine, too. But yeah, what Wings has said and what that infographic shows is Boogie talks about this all the time. And even more importantly, he talked about it like three days ago in front of Wings. So now Muda is going to ask him, well, wait a minute. Yep. That is not me. You're not muted. This is Jim being a boomer. See how long he's a boomer for. I could barely hear it. And the volume's all the way up. This, this is just Jim Boomer in it. So here we go. Am I muted? I don't know. Is my, did my mic die on me here? Hold on one second here. Hold on one second here, chat. We might have an issue. It's showing me good to go. It's showing me the audio is working. Okay, no, I'm listening to the stream. You're all fucking with me. Maybe I was muted before. Maybe I have to redo that. Do I have to redo that segment? Is Boomer Jim fucking it up again? Yep. Yep. Oh, <laughs> God damn it, Boomer Jim. <laughs> Boomer Jim, what are you doing? Grabbing the moonshine, getting drunk, selling hats. Boomer Jim, having flashbacks to the turkey legs your daddy made you suck at Thanksgiving. Boomer Jim, what the fuck? Boomer Jim. All right, <laughs> I can reset that bit up. We can do it again. That's fine. That's fine. I don't care. Let me. You know, I'm gonna pull a Ralph mail. I'll pull a Ralph. Let me pull up a Ralph mail clip. Boomer Jim's gonna get all fucked up on the zine. He's like a Ralph mail would. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we yeah. go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we need more. More. Yeah. More. Yes, yes, Stop yes, 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 This was the actual music <laughs> playing for this stream, and it's fucking funny. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm not, I really don't have any, we're not going to really cover Ralph. That, that The casino's got him covered, I think, but just a few clips here and there. In case I ever boomer it up, I've got something to go to <laughs> to show you what the alternative. <laughs> yes, yes, bring me more. Oh, bring me more. I would be the down nice for a Boogie Breaking concert, Bad remake. That would be funny. Very well. All right, but back to where we were. Got to call it breaking butter. It up. Okay, let's see in a graphic. That's his sister playing Twister with his sister. His poor little tipples. All right. So maybe I was muted. I don't know how much you heard of that. But we're going into it. Wing says he's familiar with it. Boogie's introduced it to him. He's heard it everywhere. Keem's familiar with it. He even brought it up. There was a conversation at the very beginning of the stream about it. Now later on, two hours in, Mood is going to jump in and say, mm, you know, that's weird. What about this? 
<laughs> Jim, how do you fuck this clip up twice? Wait a minute, how the fuck does Medicare fuck this clip up twice? <laughs> so this clip just has no fucking audio. <laughs> Way to go, Boomer Jim. Way to go. <laughs> uh, Ralph is Ethan Ralph. That was the guy you just saw on stream. Uh, before I before I jump in past me, before past Jim has something to say, you see where we're like, uh, this is very strange. What you're going to watch kind of play out here as we jump around the timeline of this stream is, is Boogie basically trying to pull one over and make it seem like Wings is crazy. He's gaslighting him. <laughs> I've seen what the Molly Nazi clip. The I'm clip gonna be. Is muted? I'm gonna be checking that out I'm when I do the some. Clip is muted. Is that what Ethan the problem Ralph was? stuff? Go here and check. Yeah, How yeah, Jim. The, the, the clip is muted. Oh my Jim's god, figuring this muted. out. <laughs> is that what they meant? Oh my god, I'm fucking retarded. Okay, okay. All right, I see. I misunderstood. My wife had to come down and slap me on the head. And it's like, how fucking retarded are you, bro? What are you doing? The clip is muted. Oh, it's playing man. fine for me, but I had the uh, wrong audio property. So I had the wrong <laughs> audio property set up, and it wasn't uh, playing properly. Oh, my God. That's embarrassing. Horribly embarrassing. Okay. You know, 14th time's the fucking charm, really. 14th time is the goddamn charm. Now watch. Hope... It's going to be so loud it'll blow your eardrums out. <laughs> oh, be prepared, headphone users. I thought you guys were talking about, like, my mic is fucked up. And I'm like, I've got green on my mic. Why would that be screwed up? Playing the clip repeatedly. A fucking confused old man doesn't know what he's doing. Boy, I bet you're really happy that you're paid for those memberships now, aren't you, kids? By the way, don't forget to hit those memberships and super chats and Ko-Fi and Cash App and buy a hat while you're at it. All right, let's fucking one more time. Let's start at her the up very again. beginning before you. Nope, you be quiet. Dude. <laughs> I need to make sure that this clip actually works. <laughs> Holy shit! Okay, <laughs> it should work now. We should be good. Uh... Okay, old man, here we go. At the very beginning, before you joined the stream, Wings, you were talking about, like, apparently you guys were, like, earlier in the, like, in a vehicle, and, like, Boogie was on the phone with the sister, and she was, like, mad because she was yes. lying about stuff? Yes. Because when when, when about... were you on the phone with my sister? No, I wasn't. You were on the phone in the back of the of the truck. Oh, shit. You, you were, and you were talking to your sister, and she was, no, like, I wasn't. at this you. So dumb yes, no, there. I wasn't. I didn't call my sister. What are you talking about? Your sister called you. I no, mean, I didn't. Know. Okay. During this during this trip to New York, that's yeah, a ways. Trip. How are you going to sit there and tell me this guy doesn't lie when you're recalling did, something and I he's telling not. you you're he's a fucking liar fucking to your lying. face, Wings? He's fucking lying. No, he's I calling did not you talk a fucking liar, sister. Wings. I don't talk are to my sister. My wife in here? She was Watch in the this master manipulation right here. Okay, so here we go. They're getting into their argument. Who's getting gaslit? What did this conversation take place? But what does Boogie say? I don't talk to my sister. He even goes on further to say later on, I've never talked to her. I don't talk to her. I haven't talked to her in a year. What are you talking about? You're crazy. And Wings is like, what the fuck are you talking about? And this is this is one of the things I try to bring up with these guys. You know, they could call it breaking Crisco now that I think of it, Caleb. Without any hesitation. They could call it breaking Crisco. When Huda offered to do like That'd 50 grand for this um, med medical documentation showing he had cancer, Boogie said, no, I don't trust Muda. He's a liar. He wouldn't actually pay me. When Wings recounts the story, no, Wings is a liar. That never happened. When Boogie spazzes out on stream, he says, oh, it's Keem's fault. He, he uh, forced me to do it. He forced me at gunpoint. First off, you got like 800 pounds on Keem. Secondly, the dude's like five foot tall, Boogie. All right, what is he going to bite your ankles? What do you mean you were forced to do this? <laughs> it blames Keem. Oh, it's all Keem's fault. Boot is a liar. Wings is full of shit. All projection. Pure fucking projection. But now here we are. Mood brings it up. What about this conversation? Because, you know, Boogie, I don't want to talk about these people. And he's like, well, wait a minute. I mean, you're talking about it in the truck ride. Right. <laughs> he's trying to make Wings look crazy. Wings will bring his wife in to verify that he's not saying. This does get kind of funny and stupid because they bring the wives, the wife in on, on Wings' side. And the fucking child bride comes in for Boogie. And they're both saying conflicting shit. <laughs> I think you need to really refresh your memory. Why would Wings lie hey, Desi, about that? Hey, Desi, come here. 
Why would Wings lie? Wings ain't Jesse. lying about that. Come on. Come I on. don't see any reason Wings would benefit from lying about that. Hi, hey, Doug. How you doing? About that shit. All on. right, ladies and gentlemen, we got Wings versus Boogie. Both of their women are coming in to testify. <laughs> Did Boogie, on the way to Keemstar's 4th of July party, talk to his sister about the abuse on the phone and Wings overheard it? Or did Wings make this story up? We got Desi versus Kelly, Boogie versus Wings, and Lies versus the hardcore truth. Here we go. So here we go. What do you think's going to happen? What do you think? What do you think Wings' wife is going to say? Because this, this apparently they were the four people in the vehicle is what I'm assuming. It was Wings and his wife, and then I'm guessing Boogie and his girlfriend. So, you know, Boogie's out there saying, this never happened, no conversation. I don't talk to my sister. I haven't talked to her in a year. No contact in a year. Let's go. Wings for Keemstar. Yes. And we had Desi and Boogie in the backseat of the car. Okay. Yes. Hold on. Bo was Boogie on the phone? Yes. Was Boogie on the phone with his sister? Yes. <laughs> oh, boom. So now you're going to have to try to convince me. Right. You're going to have to try and convince me that not only is Wings, for no reason whatsoever, making this up, pulled it out of his ass for the fun of it, but his wife decided to, too. His wife likes to fuck with him and troll him on occasion, just decides, oh, you know what, instead of taking that opportunity to just cause him a little mischief, now I'm just going to agree with him. So these two people corroborate what they're, what's being said. Yeah, there, there was a conversation. He was on the phone with his sister. Now, Boogie, on the other hand, has turned his camera to point at the table. And the minute he does, his dogs start going ballistic. And listen to his girlfriend in the back. It's like a hostage. It's like an ISIS video. Okay. Boom. All right. So here's the question. Even Desi. the dog fucking Desi, back hold on. up. Desi, <laughs> when, when we were on the way to the 4th of July party, okay, did I talk to anybody on the phone? No. Did I get a text from my sister? I don't you getting a text from your sister i mean i honestly don't i mean if she did but i, I did i talk to my sister on the no. phone while we were in the back of the truck no, no. of course not no you didn't Ooh, this is getting good now the reality of it is i did get a text from her but i didn't call her oh oh the reality of it because just a moment ago we heard that you haven't talked to her in a year but now you're getting it now maybe maybe it's a text I wasn't on the phone with my sister at all. Now he walks it back. Maybe it was a text. Maybe maybe I was on the phone with her. But you're totally wrong. You saw me having a phone conversation. That doesn't exist. It's in your head. It's fictitious. Wings, you're imagining things. Mr. Wings. I don't have any calls to my sister. I haven't talked to my sister on the phone in over a year. Haven't talked to her in over a year. We're going to find out that's a big old fucking lie. Oh, it's a big old lie. Well, Jim's being a boomer here really quick. Uh, because he's going to replay this clip anyway. Wings was half divided while driving. And Boogie, if you listen to Dez, she does not totally back Boogie up. Uh, so I, I, and Kelly was the only one to say, yeah, no. So I don't know. I, I, Boogie never really proves anything here either. He, uh, supposedly sends a picture of the log to Keemstar, but it's pointed out like he could edit the log before he sends it. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh. I don't know. Wings could be mistaken, but even still, if he talked about his sister versus talked to his sister, we're kind of just playing semantics. Oh, stupid fucking clips. Because now they're all doing it. I don't know why it reverted to doing this. Sorry. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> it's, it's killing me. It's killing me. God, Jim, you're killing your own momentum. Old man. Jim's How many of these clips is that going to do? Oh, God, I hope it doesn't do it on all of them. <laughs> it's got this thing where it'll play through your headphones, but it's supposed to do headphones and speakers. Jim keeps setting the wrong one up. <laughs> I'm blame that on my goofballs. Make sure that this is properly set up. I think we're properly set up. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Let's back it up a second. We'll continue the momentum. Continue it on. This is the point is peak. to show you this the manipulation tactic in real time, <laughs> which is what you're witnessing. Wings has a vivid recollection of what happened in that fucking truck. His wife backs him up completely on it. Boogie says there was no conversation whatsoever that happened, hasn't talked to his sister in a year, but maybe it was a text message. It's gaslighting the shit out of him, and it just, it continues on. Goes, this is why I can't say anything on the internet about my sister. Yes, because of a text. I did not talk to her on the phone. So you're saying Wings and his wife are liars? No, I just think they're mistaken. No, 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 they're lying. 
Are you sure? Oh, wait, wait, Wings. Are you sure it wasn't a text? Are you sure? Did you hear him talking to his sister directly? This is where it's muddy. I, uh, you got me questioning myself. But of course he was I do, on, you're he was, wrong. He was on the phone, and after he got off the phone, he talked about his sister and the internet stuff. I did talk to you about my sister, but it's not because I talked to her because I didn't talk And to he her. was doing I one of these talked- wings, like phone up to the ear, on the phone, well, talking get, to someone. Don't get yeah. confused. You have an eyewitness, Kelly. Ask right. her and just clarify I got a question. Oh, wait, 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 Boogie. We yeah, can settle ask this Kelly out. if wait. she knew I was specifically on the we phone. We can settle this out right now. Go back to sure. July 3rd on your phone and see if you sure. made a call to your sister or she made a call to you. Okay. Scroll back to July 3rd. It would have been July 3rd, right? Yep. So this would have been the date that this party's going on. This is also, I, I, this is, I, I suppose, we're watching two kind of manipulation tactics. But this is, you know, getting lost in the details uh, and the minutia of small things that don't matter and then arguing a point that's even smaller to kind of try to derail the main thrust of what the conversation Semantic. is, which we'll get into because we haven't even got into that yet, right? But this is really to kind of show it because um, I think what I'm going to set up here is something very interesting uh, you're going to see play out between the beginning of this call and the end of it, and it has specifically to do with wings. That's why it's kind of uh, you know set up like it is, specifically because he was in that truck for that conversation. There's another thing that's mentioned earlier on that I think it really ties it all together. So we're just going to watch this play out because now you know Boogie, who had said, "I oh, well, you know I want to keep uh, other family members out of it," yada yada yada, um, decides he's just going to call everybody he knows and brings them on the fucking stream. Because it's, you know, the, the warmest, happiest subject matter to talk about. Uh, yeah, July 3rd. It was, it was that day. It's the day we brought all that pizza and wings to your house. Yep, July 3rd. No, Ladies sir. And- no, sir. No, sir. I talked to my roommate. I talked to Desi on that date. I talked to Jordy. I I you talk- show us, instead of telling us, just show the... Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, sure. There's some phone numbers on here that I don't necessarily want to show, but I'll... I'll send it uh, to, I don't screenshot want to screenshot and send it yeah. to me right now. Yep. Absolutely. Here's the entire of it. And as you can see, my fingers have not deleted anything. I might've been mistaken on the call, but he was, oh, cause actually, you are. Cause he was cause actually talking to his sister. Uh, to be clear though, you can delete call history. Yeah, I know. I you swipe a finger. So, but even uh, he's walking it back. Even he's walking. Well, I'm walking it back because yeah, I'm he's not being gaslit sure. right now. There's no- right. Mood is correct. He is being gaslit right now. Because you can see that Boogie already acquiesced to the point that, yeah, there was a conversation of some form with his sister who he said he had no contact with for a year. <laughs> and you'll find out even that's, there's the lie upon lies. But they're so scattered out that it's kind of hard. Like, until you kind of, like, sit back and you watch it in retrospect and you really get a good look at it, you don't really start to sync them up. But then when you do, it's kind of like, holy shit. It's like you just lie about anything inconsequential shit that shouldn't matter small minute details that just don't fucking matter it just he just does oh no gaslighting desi knows I but do. i do know i have not fact. talked to my sister any hold on a second hold on we're gonna call my sister this is funny Fuck it. i know what he's gonna point out but now I've been dancing around third i know parties. i'm entirely certain i didn't talk to her on the third hi hey when was the last time i talked to you on the phone uh, dang, I don't know. I can't remember. Hey, was it July 3rd, just this last July? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, and one, one uh, common theme throughout this is uh, Kim, <laughs> Kim had problems not laughing about the side. I think he wanted to treat this with like kid gloves and well, maturity, really. <laughs> it's a very dark subject matter. Uh, and um. Kim doesn't have it in him. He started talking about getting his balls whacked, and uh, Kim lost his shit, started laughing, and he's like, that's highly inappropriate. So throughout the majority of the stream, he kept putting a box over his head, and I'm guessing it's uh, maybe the accent of the person speaking is what's making him giggle right now, uh, and he doesn't want that to be clipped and look. Maybe or certain. I need to know for certain. I'm going to try and catch back up. I would have to go through my uh, call or my text messages. Can you do that for us real quick? I'm on live stream right now. You want me to do it while I got you on the phone? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Okay, hang on. I'll, I'll say something for I don't know how these goddamn fangled things work. They got these uh, digital <laughs> signals. They're sending them through the teleloops or something. You're on the you're on the goddamn computer. I don't know how, how'd you fit in there, fat boy? That there fucking is, thing's tiny. There is a hilarious uh, point. Just, uh, let me figure this out now. If I hit the, uh, 
I hit one of these keys here, hey, something happened. Oh, God damn, the garage door opened. I don't think this is a fucking <laughs> phone at all. I think I've been tricked by communists. Boogie there is a hilarious point where Keemstar's right got the box over his head. <laughs> and then you got Wings of Redemption wearing a fucking top hat. And it's like the most serious is that conversation racist, by ever. The way, would you mean that racist? How is that racist? Hey, you brought up Curry well, with Muda. You brought yeah, up Curry with Muda. Because my nephews and nieces are black. Oh, what? fuck Your me. Your sister ain't black. Oh, fuck what does that me. Mean? What does that even mean? How the fuck are we going to know that? <laughs> Over a phone. It says, here we go. Your ain't black. Oh. What does that even mean? What? Oh, it's coming up. What does that even mean? How the fuck are we going to know that? Uh, the 19th. On the 19th. Remember, you know, they're looking for the date of the 2nd or the 3rd. Uh, but Boogie here has been saying, I haven't talked to my sister in a year. In a year. Oh, on the 19th. Not the 2nd or the 3rd. On the 19th, I talked to you. But you just said you never talked to her for a fucking year. Good catch. I missed that. Just The only date that matters is the 3rd. Can you confirm I didn't call you or you didn't or call the me on the 3rd? Well, no, he's saying it took place on the 3rd. I mean, what exactly are you asking me? Whether or not you and I talked on the phone on July 3rd. Listen here, computer voice. I don't fucking know what you want. You call me up, asking me to open garage doors. I'm fucking confused over here. Tell me you fit inside a computer. You're too goddamn big to fit in a computer. <laughs> computer. <laughs> Honey, I, I never erase anything, so it would take me about five minutes. Okay. Well, do you have a remembrance of us talking on the third? What did we talk about? I don't think. I didn't call you. I don't think I called you on the third. Do you remember me calling you on the third? Say, I, talk about the abuse. Say that. Say that. Well, no, I mean, we, every time we talk, there's a topic. Every time we talk, there's a topic. But wait a minute. You didn't talk to her. See what I mean? Do you see? Uh, the, we've already got th like three lies piled up on top of each other. What do we have so far? One, he's trying to gaslight fucking <laughs> wings into thinking no phone conversation ever took place. That he had no conversation at all in any form. But then he acquiesces and says, okay, I texted. But I've never talked to her, not in a year. Then it's, oh, July the 19th we talked. And then every time we talk. But you don't talk to her at all. So I, it's just, it, it's kind of baffling. Why lie about shit? Like, what what would the point of that be? Birthday or yeah. something with the kids. Oh, was it when Miguel graduated? Yeah, I think we texted about that that day, actually. Hold on, let me check. We did. Yeah, we did not. There was no phone call, though, correct? Uh, I don't think so, because yeah. you told me, tell her congratulations all and right. blah. Thank you. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Why? What's the point? I don't know. They're just being fucking. Ladies ludicrous. and gentlemen, we have 20,000 live concurrent viewers trying to find out if Boogie spoke to his sister on <laughs> July 3rd. This is the most exciting content in the fucking world. Hey, here's, here's the other thing. I don't think I texted her on that day either. Okay. <laughs> no, he's really, he's going for broke. Come on, bro. Come the fuck on. You've just got, you, 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 so I haven't talked to her in a year. We find out, yeah, you know, you do, you do talk to her. Why even lie about it? Doesn't make any sense. There's no point in lying about that in particular. And then it's, oh, well, yeah, I didn't text her. Oh, no, I didn't text her. It's Buddha's like staring him down. Like, yeah, you could be fucking with your phone. Because remember, during the cancer thing, he waved his phone around saying, I've got the evidence here. I've got the evidence here. A lot of people were speculating, oh, he just needs a day or two to doctor up some fucking shit. <laughs> to inspect element and send off some bullshit screen caps. You just said you did. I know. I'm, yeah, I think I might have, but that's the Dude, only thing. Dude, there's no way made. Wings is making this up on a thin air, and Kelly is backing him up. You no, have. No, I discussed. I discussed my sister that day. I just didn't call her. That's. I, I'm telling you, I just. So now it's confirmed or denied it, by the way, too. Okay. Well, then you guys are gonna have to. So do Wings, what did he say exactly? I, me... Yeah. By the way, yeah, uh, he's right. Mood is right. There was no confirmation one way or the other. Yeah. No confirmation one way or the other. But let's, again, back up. And here's where it gets interesting. What started Boogie in his tailspin, right? What made him actually freak out to the point that the police had to be called? Oh, and before we even do it, I'm going to double check the goddamn audio <laughs> to make sure it works. So I'm well, not sitting here I'm gonna and doing and this again. Ahead. Little fucking little demons. But they did. But we should be good. But this should be the clip. I think that'll be enlightening. So this piques my interest. I called Boogie. 
No answer. Whatever. Go on with my day. About 10 minutes later, I get a call from Boogie. And he's huffing and puffing on the fucking phone. Like he's hyperventilating. Mike's on the other line. So it's the three of us. Me, kid behind the camera, Mike, and Boogie. And Boogie goes, you are not, you are not going to talk about my sexual abuse on the show. And I go, well, I mean, people are canceling you for this. Don't you want to address it? You are not. You are not going to do it. And he's fucking losing his mind, screaming and fucking yelling. Within about like five minutes of this conversation, I tell Boogie, fine, I won't bring it up. But Wings might bring it up. And then he lost it. So what started Boogie on his big freak out that made them want to call the police on him? that made him start suicide baiting like crazy towards this group of people. Here's my hypothesis. Wings was privy to a conversation that was embarrassing to Boogie related to this exact subject. Boogie remembered that fucking conversation and remembered that Wings was there. And when Keem says Wings might bring it up, that was the shit that broke the dam. That was when the waters were let loose. You could see he gaslit fucking Wings and his wife the second he could. There was no conversation. There were no text messages. No, nothing ever happened. I don't even talk to that person. I haven't talked to him for a year. And yet, in the span of this entire podcast, he's shown to be lying about um, all of it. But what started it? Wings. Wings heard something Wings shouldn't have heard. And Boogie flipped out. Because he knew Wings would call his ass out on it if he remembered. Because Wings has been, been a lot more vocal lately. Yeah. And saying whatever the fuck Wings wants to say. I don't blame him. That is my honest belief. So what did that freak out look <laughs> what did that freak out look like? Oh boy. Yep, nope. Oh hold on. Jim. Hold on again. Let's get that one ready to go. People say Boogie was like spurging out. What was he spurging? Your hat. Let him know. Go off, Queen. Go off, oh, Queen. I'm not interested. Just let me get through it, Dan. You got Matt, this. Matt, stop the fuck out. Let me get through it, motherfucker! I begged you not to make me talk about this on the show. I begged you. You crushed it. I this is so theatrical. I this shit you. is such I bullshit, you, in my Dan. opinion. I begged you. You crushed I, it. At you, one point, you can I, see you him lift the good table tonight. with his hands you, when he's I freaking out. At one point, you. it's stupid. Did, it's so theatrical you, and what's fake. What's going on over there? This <laughs> fucking stream died. He's just pounding the table. I begged you, Dean. Yes, that's right. Buy half for your hat. I need to incorporate that into a commercial. I need to make that part of my <laughs> part of my commercial. I just want you to have an idea, like in your head, when we move on to the next clip, and we're talking about like, no, well, you know, what's going on over here? Let me get this next. Uh, let me get this next clip ready. Uh, what you know, what's going on over here? What what uh, what kind of freakout are we talking about? Well, <laughs> I can tell you, <laughs> it's probably that. It's probably him springing out, flailing his arms around. You know, and screaming about, uh, you know, unaliving. Oh, that's right. I've got to use the new uh, kosher terms. Unaliving himself. Unaliving himself. Yeah, now Kim goes into details about this. And he hangs up the phone on me and Mike and starts FaceTiming me, okay? He starts FaceTiming me, and it got so scary that I hit record, and I didn't actually record this part. But what Boogie did on FaceTime to me was so insane. He was screaming and yelling. He's fucking has a bottle of a bottle of pills. And I don't know what kind of pills they are, but he's putting them in his fucking mouth. Right. And he's acting like he's going to eat them and he's punching himself in the fucking head. And then he's grabbing hunks, wings, hunks of hair and pulling out hunks. I'm telling you, his you got, hand. You, you got you, you got that recorded. I don't have that part recorded, but I have some of the yelling and screaming. So there's Boogie calling him up after he told him, oh, maybe Wings is going to bring it up. Maybe Wings is going to talk about it. Maybe Wings will remember that conversation in that truck, Boogie, and bring it up on a, a stream. And what's he do? Grabs a pill bottle, starts smacking himself in the face, going full tart rage, ripping his hair out, looking like a complete fucking lunatic. And then he keeps got like some of this recorded and he looks like an angry dog. <laughs> he looks like a dog that you took a toy away from on my fucking phone because the FaceTime was so yeah, I've, 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 I've seen him yell and scream before, but like at what point do you start calling this dude's bluff? Cause he does this every fucking time he doesn't get his way. It's like a kid in the, in the fucking drugstore and unhappy. He didn't get a car. You see that? See, that's been wings for the last week. He's been calling him out on his bullshit a lot. And I really, truly do think when we looked at those earlier clips about the sister shit and the lie and 
uh, him him saying that Wings was just off base, that um, he was worried Wings would have a recollection and bring it up because Wings has been just firing off shots. Like this is what it is. I mean, he, could, he could be taking homeopathic pills, as far as you know. That and those are basically nothing. Now this is chalk. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is after the head of hair. Now remember, this is a FaceTime, and I'm recording, screen recording it on my phone, so there's no audio. But can you see that? Look at him. I want to see. <laughs> it, looks, <laughs> it looks like a, a mad dog. Look at this his hair pull. I don't see no big splotches of hair. It didn't happen. Here. I didn't get the hair pull. I didn't get the hair pull in the video, but he's just... He reminds me of my pets. He fucking reminds me of my he pets. He went full fucking retard. Like, this is what my dogs look like when I like playing with like a chew toy with you them. You never for, like, doing tug of war. Like, really, look at this. Look at, like, imagine living with this, this level of just... <laughs> those faces, goddamn. I need to make Luma, like, do a... Uh, you know, like a refreshed version of this. Like, really expand it <laughs> out with some AI. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Jim is having entirely too much fun with the It didn't happen. Here. I didn't get the hair pull. I didn't get the hair pull. Jim learning video. AI is dangerous but for the world, but hilarious. Fucking, I fucking love it. You know, if you got on the phone with him about an hour a day, he'd be in such good fucking shape. He's just fucking losing it. Like, completely losing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this guy, man? This fucking guy. What kind of, what must it be like to be his friend? You're like, oh God, who am I gonna talk to today? Oh, it's Buggy. I wonder what's a what. What am I in store for today? Is he gonna wow me with a crypto scam? Is it gonna be more fake cancer shit? Is he gonna bark like a dog on Facetime and threaten to fucking throw himself off a bridge? What's the bookster gonna do today? What's what's gonna happen with our bookman? I want to know if Jim just made that reference. Because <laughs> Is he gonna of the invite me shit? on down like, and make me a member of the sub club? <laughs> am I gonna be a member of the sub club? Oh boy. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. Welcome to the sub club. One for me and one for my hooker. Oh, Welcome yeah. to the sub club. One for the hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. <laughs> oh, this guy, man. This fucking. It just doesn't end. I'm a little. Sta like, it's a little staggering, really, when you kind of line up the lies and you see just the bullshit. And so, I mean, that really was the the thrust of what the stream was going to be about. I was going to go over this and you know, it is a dark subject. It is a touchy subject. I get it. Uh, people were uncomfortable with it. I get that too. Um, but it was like, he was already, he was already fucking with people about details, small details to try to like, just and the wings thing. It just adds up. And then he's barking like a dog and ripping his hair out and smacking himself in the face. He's just going full time with it. Doesn't care. He's, he's full on. Fuck it. I'm going to do whatever I want. I have to pause all these clips when I when I start them up to make sure that their audio is playing properly. So give me a second. Uh, but it continues because Kim gets into the story of having to, I guess, call a welfare check. Not exactly 100% sure how this works. It's not like you're, you know, swatting somebody. It's not um, sending the police there with an armed response. But, you know, uh, <laughs> this guy's talking like a maniac and uh, eating pills like they're Tic Tacs. I mean, that's as bad I, as I suppose is much going working on. as but Let's, let's hear it. The entire time, I'm going to kill myself, 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 all right? Like, he hit me with the uh, suicide. Dude, just, I'd, have, I'd have hit him with, make sure you do it outside so you don't have to take the wall out of your house so we can sell it for highest value. Oh, no mercy. Page 5 Pimp coming in from the top rope with no fucking mercy. Wings is really, he's really coming out of his shell. He's like, I'm just going to dunk on this motherfucker. Keep the spotlight off my ass. Oh, oh, we're going to have to cut a wall in his house. Fat motherfucker. Okay, you know, okay. He's like, basically tell him, make sure to upload it to live leaks. It got to the point where I started getting scared. So then I hit up the group chat, right? Let me go back to the fucking group chat with us. What did I even say in there? Oh, this is so fucking stupid. Um, man, we talked about a lot on this. Uh, I, 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 I tagged, I tagged you. I said, I may have to call the cops on Boogie. Mm -hmm. He just called me with kid behind the camera. He's pulling out his hair, big hunks of hair. He put a shit ton of pills in his mouth. I'm not sure if he swallowed them or not. He's saying he's a hundred percent going to kill himself. Um, 
if he has to answer any questions about his abuse, and I already told him that he wouldn't, and he doesn't believe me. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say what Muta was saying, but, like, basically, I, I went to the group chat for help. I, like, I didn't know really what to do. And he kept up with, he's kept texting me fucking suicidal shit. I'm said, that's it. So I fucking called the cops. Do you actually me. believe that though? Do you actually fucking believe that shit? Like, I, I, I understand what you're saying. You're saying if, if, if he, if I don't believe him, that 10% of him that might happen, well, if what if he does it? I'll have it on my conscience. Right. Yeah. But like he said it so many fucking times, it's gotten to the point that you, it, it, it's hindrance to believe him. I mean, he's right. This is something that Boogie has become well known for is he pulls sorry i had a small bit of an emergency apparently one of the dogs like flipped out missed the stairs got so excited peed everywhere it's a, uh i'm gonna go on mute for a second though <laughs> this, out, this is his trump card anytime the heat gets a little too hot anytime things get a little too feisty anytime it's a little too inconvenient to address or to deal with he's always ready to jump to the I'm going to unalive myself. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to go do something terrible to myself. And it's the best deflection he's had. Well, until he was, you know, you know, he got the cancer thing. He was at for a little while and uh, the abuse stuff for a little while. But this is like the, this is just the cream of the crop for him. It's the go-to. It's a standard, really. And I think, you know, even Wings has seen through it at this point. And I think if you watch any of Boogie's like interactions on social media, uh, you've probably heard stories about this. Where he'd get into fights with some creator, and this is the shit that he'd be, he'd be saying stuff like this in the DMs. Or he gets into an argument on a stream and he'd go right to it. Always the fallback. But of course, it keeps on going. Just like we've been going for an entire hour. Oh, hey, Jim. You know what that means, right? That means it's break time. That also means it's time to sell some hats. <laughs> Remember, the best quality hats are... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jim do his his hat salesman shit. We'll kind of fast forward, make sure we're caught up. And yeah, so apologies. Apparently, uh, one of my dogs decided to go nuts uh, because mom's home and mom's home with food. So they got super excited because they wanted some French fries. They were actually in here trying to bully me out of my French fries, but no such luck for them. Anyway. Uh, apparently, so I've got little miniature dachshunds. Well, they ran up the stairs. The one got so excited that she ran up the stairs, but like ran off the stairs as she ran up them and was like, was like full Lion King moment hanging on the bed. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> my wife went to pick the dog up. Then the dog peed because she's embarrassed and too excited and she can't hold it. And it's a mess. It's a big mess. Oh, God. But, uh, yeah, so we've reached the intermission. We'll take a break. Uh, see what's going on here. By the way, uh, some some different news while we're on break here. Um, so, first of all, apparently uh, the president spoke, but a lot of people are not believing in it. They're apparently tr trending right now as... Uh, Biden dead somewhere. Um, I do have a couple of bookmarks that I want to share with you. So I saw this one from Kind of Sav. Now, Kind of Sav is uh, the person that actually uh, is kind of entangled. It was the person that threatened to buy the rope for Rich to hang himself with and all that. Well, uh, they they screenshotted the whole boogie tattoo thing here that happened earlier and said, as a tattoo haver. I have to say that I'm very skeptical of this being legit. Yes, I watched the stream, but it still seems sus. Um, I, I don't know. It seems pretty legit to me. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, also Colossal is crazy. Apparently is the one that actually came up with the idea. So right here, the liar face tattoo idea I gave Keem has happened. Um, this also came up breaking. Apparently, uh, right now, NORAD filed, fired a couple missiles and stuff. Uh, it's It's been interesting. So, a lot of stuff going on right now, on top of all the Palestine stuff going on in D.C. Um, I do have some other things that I'm working on, but I just thought I'd give you guys that little bit of an update while we're, while we're waiting on break. I, I feel like he's just going to hide the fucking tattoo in his beard. Honestly. I, like, they had him put it in such a... Hey, look, the Tumblr. I've got that Tumblr. Uh, be like me. Buy that Tumblr from Jim. 
It's actually not bad, and I really enjoy it, and it's great at keeping drinks cold or hot, whatever you need. Um, but yeah, I feel like he's going to fucking hide the tattoo in his beard, honestly, if I if I was being honest. Um, I, I feel like he's going to be a fucking pussy, and that's why he got it there. I still think it should have been in the in the space right below where his lips are, so that way he can't hide it in his beard, uh, at least not very well. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's basically of no consequence in that location. Jim's right. I mean, who's going to fucking see it there? It, it's no big threat. So, I, I don't know. I, I, think it's, I think it's really fucking stupid. But, uh, let's see where we're at. I'm going to put this... We'll put this on low, so that way we know when Jim comes back. I'm going to continue to eat because I'm fucking hungry. But if you guys need to use the restroom, great time. Go take a break. Jim should be back in like any second now. Oh, chili cheese fries? God damn, I'm jealous of that, Jim. I've got Bebop's, which is like rallies or checkers or any of those types of shit it's a it's a central plains midwest thing they're fucking amazing they're literally the best burger i've ever had but i'm like infatuated with the chicken sandwich hello hey how's it going how you feeling uh uh the painkillers are kicking in yeah so i'm feeling a little bit better okay holy shit what do you think so far of the gym streams Oh, God. Um, I don't even know if the third one was really even necessary, but you know, everyone loves a trilogy, so yeah. Just, um, fantastic. other news: fantastic. Ped oh, Manko nice is supporting Shad Man. Oh, calls lovely. everyone a bunch of but calls everyone a bunch of pearl clutchers over the Chris <laughs> Tyson drama. Oh my God! What a fucking horrible take! Like, the, can he not pick a winning take? I mean, he started with know. fucking Ralph, so I, I guess not. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Diorio should have killed him when he had the chance. Uh, again. <laughs> Swing and a miss for Team Diorio. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I think I think Jim's back, so. I have a second background. <laughs> oh, Because uh, we had done the, um, the, animal, the animal cancer thing. And so uh, my wife was like, well, we need to do like a dark a Dark Souls version of that, uh, based on what you had said to him. So let me let me switch up the backgrounds. <laughs> it's the dark, dark cancer. Let's really, let's go all in on this. Cancer and sex abuse. Oh, yeah. It's a good combination. <laughs> it really, really makes YouTube super fucking uh, happy. I'm sure they're thrilled yeah, about I it right now. I think Jim would like to see our tangent about that. Yeah. Okay. Probably. So we're, we're, at, we're back at the beginning of the, the uh, stream. Where Boogie is starting to spaz out because he's worried Wings is going to bring up something that's probably going to embarrass him. And he starts yanking his hair out and downing pills and just going going all Ralph Amali on us. God, do I have another Ralph Amali clip? Maybe. We got the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah clip. Let me try yeah. it here. But let me, let me make sure. Oh, man, I thought he was going to bring works. up the Uber Alice one. Because <laughs> it never does. <laughs> okay, yes, it looks like this should be good. Yeah, Ralph is having a bit of a tough time. He's had like like eighteen pill streams in a row. I don't know what the fuck's going on. He's got to keep ahead a lot, of Boogie. A lot of shit's going Boogie's on catching guy. up to him. <laughs> but Boogie's basically pulling one of these on game. No, no, that's not no, no, that's no, just, no, that's no, no. That's just too bad no, for sharing no, experience. No. Wow, God damn, you're a fucked up some bitch. Like, <laughs> fuck, holy shit, like what the fuck? <laughs> you know, he, he he likes to throw the bottles around. Throw throw the throw the throw the bottles around. Throw throw the energies around. Yeah, yeah, throw throw the bottle around. We'll put that energy around. I love all the clanking. People thought I was, oh, Jim, when you edited that clip oh, yeah. of uh, um, Ralph, you know, spurging out and being. I can pretty much confirm that drug. Ralph has type 2 diabetes. Oh, yeah? Given what I saw on Kino Casino last night, he oh. has the same uh, the same symptoms that I'm having with, like, the flaking of the skin and everything. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so he's got, like, uh, early stages of, like, uh, his body shutting down. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. That's going to be fucking funny. 
I'm I'm all in for a fucking Ralph death stream. <laughs> well, I mean, he says he has Cushing's, but I can pretty much mm. confirm he has type two diabetes, and it's pretty much brought on by his alcoholism. I believe it. Off his ass with eight thousand pill bottles and liquor bottles getting uh, jolted around. Now that's a real deal. That's 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 a genuine pill stream. <laughs> so we just got to pull one of those, or at least it'd be sounded like that if you downed a whole bottle. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't on this wonderful call. Let me see. I want to make sure I didn't. Uh, look, the entire call? time I'm going to kill myself. Okay, no, we did that one. Now we're going into the second call. So he's got his multiple calls with this crazy fucker that are just nonstop. Just, just nonstop. Can't stop him. Won't stop him. Again, let's check the audio. God, why did it do this? I don't, I've never seen a default like that to doing it on every clip. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, here we go. We're continuing on. And he's just huffing and pu I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. His girlfriend is in the background, absolutely terrified. His roommate is in the background, absolutely terrified. I go, am I on speaker? And he goes, yeah. And I go, can your girlfriend hear me? And uh, he goes, yeah. I go, do you hear how scared your fucking girlfriend is? He goes, I don't care. She won't have to live with someone who faked cancer. And fucking just, dude. So I go, Boogie, you need to calm down right now. Because. <laughs> you seen fucking wings? Oh, just shit on him. Non look at that. Just, just shitting on him. <laughs> he's reached his limit he's had enough of this boogie guy no more so i go boogie you need to calm down right now because i had i told him before the cops came wings i said boogie you need to calm down right now because the cops are on their way to your house i had to call in a wellness check because of this is the funniest shit i ever fucking heard in my life that boogie was gonna charge the fucking cops here's what you're gonna hear next boogie the 400 pound, barely mobile, sprained his fucking ankle, going to the bathroom, having motherfucker, is gonna charge the police and commit suicide by cop. Holy shit, talk about things that ain't never gonna fucking happen. Do these threats? Well, it ain't exactly like a raging bull. <laughs> no, it's more full of bull. <laughs> Calm down for the cop coming, right? He goes, Oh, thank God you called the cop. I'm going to have the cop shoot me in the head. I'm going to have the cop shoot me in the head, or as soon as that motherfucker walks into my door, I'm going to fucking hit the cop, and I'm going to spend three days in county jail. Now, this is Boogie we're talking about. Remember, that this is a guy days. that uploaded a video. No, he's going to spend a lot more, a lot longer uh, assaulting yes. an officer. <laughs> yeah, that's like a five-year minimum if he gets, like, convicted. Yeah. Where he got winded after doing one strip of his lawn. He, he, he pushed a push mower one strip of his lawn and then sat down and did a 10 minute video saying that his heart was going to explode telling everybody on the phone in his rage while he's barking like a dog and ripping his hair out and downing pills that he's ready to fight the police he's going to suicide my cop the second they walk in old boogie's going to throw a haymaker at the officer he's got his pot full of hot water and he's ready to rumble these are things he actually Fucking the reason said why me. I say that these are things that actually were said to me. Why? Is because of that statement right there. What he told Keem and that Keem supposedly recorded that yeah. he's going to plan this out. Yeah, so that's why it's all premeditated. Years. Plus, he's already an additional felon. Yeah, that and uh, the reason why you could bring up the juxtaposition of Ralph when he assaulted that female pol police officer <laughs> when uh, Andy was like with him down in uh, Florida. Yep. Or Tennessee, I forget which. Yeah, Ralph was passed out like, for that. Yeah, he served like what, like less than a year. Ah, uh, yeah, I it? think I think it was around a year. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so. Yep. <laughs> so I you am know, the, freaking out, wings. Like I am not like this is not content. This is fucking bad. Oh, it's terrible. That's why it's in my domain. <laughs> so what do you think Boogie does? After, like, throwing a massive tantrum, having a welfare check called in on him, having a weeks-long, uh, you know, celebration of getting shit on, where every A-log that's ever existed is high-fiving each other as he implodes. Like, it's just, it's just gone terribly. And he's telling, yeah, I'm never coming on. This is never going to happen. What do you think he does? Of course he joins. Of course he decides, I'm going to join. 
So what is what does that look like? What does it look like when our sane, rational individual here decides, oh, I'm going to jump on stream with everybody. We're going to have a gay old time. <laughs> We're going to have a great time up on stream here. Let's take a look. Just a little highlight of how Bookster was <laughs> on this fucking stream. It's when you... You know, self delete yourself, and Desi has to witness it or find your you fucking big fat it. carcass. All these motherfuckers to watching back to right now. What your their fucking cocks doing? Yeah, They'll but you're destroying people's for lives They'll regardless. For you're They'll going against the thing. For Don't They'll help them fucking so far. Boogie, stop. Fucking Boogie, fun. stop, stop, stop. The screaming and yelling isn't helping you, and it isn't. They'll all be better off. I'll whisper it. They'll all be better off. Listen to me. Oh God, imagine. Imagine you're his chick, and it's like three in the morning, and that's what you—that's what's whispered in your ear. That's what that sexy time's about to start, and here comes Boogie, and this is what you hear at three in the morning in a dark room with no lights or escape. You and it isn't. I'll whisper it. Listen to me. This is what he does. This is what this was the conversation last night. Go fuck yourself. I will divulge no more medical information to any of you motherfuckers. <laughs> this is, you don't got to tell me what it is. Like, there's a bevy of medicine. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Situation. God, I'm so happy. I hate this. I hate it. I hate this show. I hate fucking breathing air. I hate being alive. I'm so much fucking pain. I can't fucking stand it. Anymore. I can't fucking stand this! I can't fucking stand this! I ruined my fucking life! I just wanted to be up <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here's the table lifting. Here's the fake fucking table lifting. <laughs> Seriously, Boogie, you're not in any fucking pain. No. No. He has no idea what pain is. It's a perfect freeze frame! Holy shit! Oh my god, that's awesome! It's like a hungry, hungry hippo. It's a hungry, hungry hypocrite. Oh, I'm big old boogie, the hungry, hungry hypocrite. I've come to eat your lies. Feed me your little marble lies. Put them in my tummy. Put them in my fat fucking tummy. <laughs> Holy shit, what a great pause. Hungry, hungry hypocrite. Oh, perfection. Fucking perfection. I love it. Look at that. Look at the just psychosis. <laughs> what is the name of the... Oh my god. What is the name of the clown in um in the Spawn movie? He looks that oh. looks like the clown from the Spawn movie without the makeup. Oh shit. He does. What is the name of the fucking clown? <laughs> Somebody in chat has to know what I'm talking about. He's a dead ringer for it. I don't know. It's perfection. <laughs> I'd say with a little bit of makeup, he it's looks like the clown from Twisted Metal. Or that, yeah. Absolute perfection. <laughs> I died. Oh my God. That's what I say oh my God. over and over and over again. I hate being alive. I hate being alive. I hate breathing. I hate being alive. I'm in tremendous pain. I'm in tremendous pain. Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. Financial pain? Uh, the pain of ego death? What kind of pain are we talking about here? Because <laughs> you seem to be pretty active. You seem to be moving around. I couldn't do that. My ribs are fucked. They're fucked five ways from Sunday. What uh, what what sort of pain are you in? If I flailed around like that, there'd be fucking bone dust shooting out of my ears. <laughs> Boogie's like, I am in so much pain. Let me do calisthenics. I guess it's his tribute to Richard Simmons. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. But of course, conversation continues. Boogie spurgs out, and Moody comes on and tries to discuss this with him, but doesn't really kind of get anywhere. Everybody's a little, you know, worried about kind of touching on the subject. So of course you need to, you need to bring in somebody. <laughs> you need to bring in somebody who's willing to, you know, be an asshole. Oh, I wonder who that person might be. Who's the asshole we could bring in? Do you, you don't you want to talk to... about it, and I don't want to talk about it, but somehow you still want to talk Muda about it. Nut. I'm so Muda confused. Hard nut. I look honestly. Muda hard brought is, it back. Up, so this is such talk. a dark subject. I don't care. You're like saying stuff like that's like people are going to pick on you about. I literally laughed like your mom spanking your boner saying bad boy and shit. Like, I'm sorry, but I just. Which <laughs> uh, let's hear that one more time. That's a great sound clip for game. <laughs> your mom spanking your boner and saying bad boy. <laughs> I literally laughed like your mom spanking your boner saying bad boy and shit. Like, I'm sorry, but I just. Which is not funny, right? But it's just, <laughs> this is not the place for this stuff. This stuff is too okay, serious um, and too. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, 
No, you're fine. Ralph had a good Ralph had a good one here. Oh, um, lovely. Oh my god. I get the joke, but I don't agree with it. God damn, Ralph. God damn. I'm not even going to like read that, but like there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get what he was going for, but holy hell, is that something I would not want to repeat? God damn. Holy shit. I, I swear, him and Boogie are competing for biggest fucking piece of shit of the world right now. Yeah. And it's a silent competition. Hey. Like, they're not even acknowledging each other. Yeah. I mean, like, Ralph is having pill stream after pill stream. Boogie is basically pretending to lose his fucking mind by lying about cancer and his uh, childhood sexual abuse. Like I, I was telling you this like a couple of days ago, it seems like there there is a fucking competition between the two, just to get Ralph to, or not to get Ralph, but to get Medicar to pay attention to him. Yeah, holy shit, dark. Like it, it's not the place for that. Yeah, we're here to make jokes and and do this drama. Is not, shit. This is not Doctor Phil. You know, there's like, like a fucking Mr. Medicare segment. He's the guy that can fucking cross cross examine. Well, bring him on. He can do it. I don't care. I don't care. We'll get it done. Uh, <laughs> let me hit up Mr. Medicare. Oh, Say his God. name and like, he'll appear. Wally does that. There's no. You're not thinking. Mr. Medicare's in chat. Says he'll talk about it right now. Yeah. Oh, God. Wait, really? <laughs> oh God. Oh fuck. Oh no. <laughs> No, we can't. We just we're doing so well. We're getting views and money. Don't don't let him on. Oh no. If you're getting if getting his boner spank was uncomfortable, oh what's gonna happen when Jim joins? Oh no. Oh no. We can't let Jim join. <laughs> oh god, please let this clip play properly. Oh yeah, I wonder how it goes. I wonder how things go once Jim jumps in. It's my my money, my money tweeted my tipples. My mother tweeted my fucking tipples. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> this is a dark, serious conversation. He's grabbing his tits, calling them tipples. Oh, my mother's. Oh, God, mommy grabbed my tipples. She would grab my little tipples. This is something Keem brought up earlier, too. You know, but he's like, oh, hey, this is dark. I was fucking horribly abused. <laughs> Keem looks at him and he's like, oh, your mom gave you a titty twister. No, she she grabbed, she twisted my tipples. My sensitive little tipples. I don't want you guys to think that uh, I don't take this seriously. I do. Uh, I take this very seriously. <laughs> I even, you know, because we're making lots of jokes over here. That's That's highly inappropriate with such a dark subject matter. So I wanted to play a PSA, really, you know, let you know the severity of this subject matter, because it is, it's important that you understand uh, what we're, we're discussing and that oh it's a grown-up subject and it should be discussed in a, a very adult way. So I pulled up a PSA that really lays that out for you. And remember, being abused by a male does make you gay. So if something like this happens to you, know that it is your fault. You did wrong. And telling someone about it does make you less of a man. The bottom line, if you are molested, you wanted it, you did something to deserve it. That make you weak. No offense. Being molested means you're gay. I think that's uh I think that's a message we can all really get behind, Chad. I, I think I think when Fuck somebody did Jim find that shit. Somebody twists your tipples. When they're going for those tipples, it's it's, it's uh, that's the point really. Where you realize that you are in fact oh, yeah, a gay man. Pat. They've touched Yo. I think a bunch of Palestinian protesters just to face the Liberty Bell. Oh yeah, they did. I I saw that. Holy shit. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. It's your tipples and now you're gay. <laughs> there's there's no taking that back. I'm sorry. So what was this conversation like? And this is going to get to the crux of the matter. Uh, I know I'm making a lot of jokes because really you can't even really have this conversation with Boogie and we'll talk about why in a second. But like, I want to give you like a taste of it because I was in this fucking thing for like an hour. So let's 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 go over some of it. You know, I wanted to get essentially like a baseline. This is essentially how this was set up was like this. Um, they had infographics and access to a Kiwi Farms thread with a post that outlined all the statements Boogie had ever made. And I got brought in to basically ask him about it. Not super familiar with it, but I, I was like, I'll read it. Fuck it. And so when I come in, I want to get a baseline. I want him to lay out everything 
so I can compare it to all the other statements he's made previously, because otherwise there's no way to like square it up. So let's just, I'm going to play just a sample of how ridiculous this shit is and why it like dead end <laughs> on itself. So uh, you, I think you'll enjoy this. Why don't you tell me just the basics and you can leave out the people you don't want to talk about. I'm fine with that. But just the basics of what your actual claims are, because I'm going to read through this okay. and they're going to have screen caps of stuff you've said. So you tell me right now what the real story is when it okay. comes to the abuse you suffered. So through talking to my family and having a better understanding of what happened, um, when it comes to my mom, she wanted to make sure that I never left her. She wanted to make sure that I never was sexually attracted to other people. And that's one of the reasons she fed me wrong on purpose. We've talked about that before. Um, part of that was to... Can you expand well, on, on that? When you say fed you wrong, what do you mean? Uh, she put the wrong foods into me and then forced me to eat them. You know, oh, she would, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is like actually physically sat you down and force fed you. She just made you fatty foods. What do you mean? No, by no, no. She, she gaslighted me. She's like, everybody eats this way, Steve. This is how everybody eats, right? Everybody eats pizza. Everybody eats all this. You want to... And I'm like, why don't we eat the way they do on television, Mom? And they're like, well, nobody actually eats like that. Was oh, your brother? Okay. Uh, but no, even from start. So you're no. trying to say that one of the aspects of the abuse you suffered as a child was your mother gave you pizza? No, she <laughs> would give me no healthy alternatives and encourage me to overeat on purpose. Now. Yeah, but your brother's not overweight. So tragically, our bookster, as he's being just horrifically abused at this house, having his tipples twisted, was fucking fed Domino's. They played a terrible game of Avoid the Noid. It was uh, for keeps. It's a high stakes version of Avoid the Noid. Yeah, tipple twisting and pizza. It's a little. It's a little bit much. <laughs> it's a little bit much. So, what was the issue we ran into? And this is why this is such a pain in the ass to get into. Um, Boogie had for the past, I'd say, decade, based on the screen caps I saw and what he admitted on stream talked about this talked about all aspects of the alleged abuse that he had gone through um with with all sorts of different people uh related to him strangers all all this stuff and he talked about it openly he talked about it even on like uh ethan ralph's kill street he was on there a couple times talked about it talked about it in his blog post talked about it on twitter talked about it in his youtube videos talked about it with wings um on i think the low call pat or podcast like four or five episodes back to some degree from what wings was saying or something of that nature right um so he talked about it quite a bit but when this conversation went down he started laying out all these ground rules because now we have these infographics we have these long form posts talking about all the statements he's ever made and a lot of them have to do with people he refuses to talk about and the people he would talk about were either deceased or not around but anybody that was alive or could react he wouldn't bring that up now i did call some uh, people on the phone to try to ask some questions but the way he worded it made it a little confusing so how do you talk about something like this right if the if the allegation against boogie is he made all this up right that he's, he's sympathy farming or he's exaggerating you know maybe part of the abuse was real but not all of it or maybe it's all fictitious and completely made up like the cancer shit um or it's some kind of a uh, weird grifting scam like the cryptocurrency thing but he's got all these ground rules because he doesn't want to bring in uh these third parties even though he's talked about these third parties extensively for years for years and years how do you talk about it well you don't you can't it, it you end up talking about eating too much pizza and getting your uh tipples twisted that's what you end up with it's a dead conversation there's no way to proceed with it Unless it's just all out there, unless you unless you can just read the statements that he's publicly made, publicly made, where do you go with it? You know, it even got to a point, because uh, Keem had kept talking about, oh, I want to do this punishment with you to get you back on the show, to make you have amends, um, and he had, like, suggestions for it, and my suggestion at the very end of this was you should bring on the A-Logs, because who's going to be more informed than the people that troll the shit out of them? Or make a YouTube content on them that, that have a, a better knowledge of this than I would or Muto or Kim would or Wings would. They would know all the details of these stories to be able to ask the questions that are going to actually hit. That would be uncomfortable. That would be a punishment because they wouldn't be able to run away from that. But sadly, I don't think that's going to happen. It would have been entertaining as fuck if it did. But uh, apparently that's not going to happen. So this conversation, it just kind of sort of peters out and dies there. What, do, what are we left with? 
we're left with him arguing and lying for 20 or 30 minutes about a phone conversation he says didn't take place, but it looks like it took place with a person he said he never talked to. He instantly got a a hold of on the phone within two seconds, and then they admit they talked repeatedly with him throughout the year. You've got him, uh, you know, talking about just silly, goofy shit, throwing fits left and right, just, just doing all this shit. And it culminates at the very end of this stream because there's no ground being made on these fucking allegations with Muda saying, Hey, well, you know, maybe if you want to do something, you should match me. Let's uh, donate money to uh, fucking St. Jude's or a cancer charity. And of course, Boogie's like, I can't do that. All I've got left is, uh, I think he's at $3,000 and I can't afford it. I need to pay for my medical insurance for what your fake cancer. No, I need to pay for my fucking medical insurance. He's just going on and on and on about this. So finally they convince him to do it. They convince him to pay uh, 3000 and he overpaid by 25 So $3,025, and then uh, Mudahar matched him. So St. Jude's got a random payment for like seven grand from two two people <laughs> slap fighting on a, a live stream. Uh, but what was Boogie's? This is probably the, my favorite bit out of all the entire goddamn... It's like honesty shown through at the very end. It's like, it's like the facade dropped for a minute. And he actually says this. Hold on, let me get this. Uh, let me get this fucking clip lined up because it's it's great. Don't just, I I don't even want to. Like, let me get this full. The good news, <laughs> the good news is I'm um, I'm getting my play button back and charity got help, so that's all that matters. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, buddy. Wait, if I donate a little bit more, do I get the play button? We matched. If I get my three thousand back, sure. You take money back from dying kids? No, no, I mean, no, M- 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 Holy so, shit. Mudahar would also have to give me my 3000 oh. back. Somebody <laughs> clip that. What a guy. This <laughs> guy <laughs> threatens to charge back the money. If I don't get my play button, no, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. They can die. I don't give a shit. Fuck those kids. Unbelievable. <laughs> brilliant way to go boogie way to way to leave him on a high note right way to really end that stream that uncomfortable fucking stream on a high note now i can't say for certain uh again because i'm not super familiar with it whether the abuse stuff is real or not um any anything's possible it, it is the boy that cried wolf and i know it sounds awful who would ever doubt somebody coming forward with abuse physical or sexual or whatever abuse uh they suffered as a child oh my god how terrible how could you ever doubt them But this is a guy that has just lied about everything constantly, constantly, from big things to small things. So it doesn't surprise me that there are people making infographics about this. There are threads that have detailed posts that are fucking 20 pages long going into details about statements previously made where they contradict themselves or other people that are familiar with it actually make statements on it. And again, I'm trying to be vague. I'm trying to actually respect his wishes by not like putting a name out. Or, or saying how they're related to them, you know? Um, but it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that um, that he's being doubted on it. I, I, again, I know it's a heavy fucking subject, but this is a guy that crypto scammed everybody, said it was a joke, and this is a guy that said he had cancer when he didn't uh, to Sympathy Farm and got called out on it. And, I, you know, I, I'd almost want to see somebody make, like, a collection of boogie lies. Like, put together a, a definitive edition of things like that. But you'd have to sit through so many videos and so many live streams of him making contradicting comments. Even just on that one that I did, there were even more buried in it. But the one with Wings in particular was so serious and out, out in your face uh, that made it easy to kind of like, like stitch it together so you can see how much weight it would have the entire day of the live stream. So, I mean, where does that leave a local live? I mean, Kino still wants to redeem this man. So, so, you know, he won't bring the A logs on. So he convinces him, well, hey, Oh, I shouldn't say convinces him. He threw out this suggestion and said, hey, if you go get a tattoo on your face that says liar because you lied about cancer, um, we'll let you back on the show. We'll do a poll with the audience to let you back on the show. I still so, can't believe uh, this. You know, this apparently, rubbed me the that's wrong what happened way. today. <laughs> uh, wrong, wrong yeah, way. I there mean. We can we he talk went about to Ralph a tattoo parlor and live stream. What's that? Can we talk about Ralph for a quick sec? Yeah, sure. Because... I don't know. It's like, remember how I was telling you about his abandonment issues and how he lost his parents within two years? Yeah. And how he sees Jim a father figure. Yep. I don't want to say that's why he started doing the pill streams again, but it just seems like there is like no serious intervention for Ralph. 
period to keep him from dying. No, like no. And he just wants it. He wants the attention from Null because I think he's become like the new surrogate father rather than a target. <laughs> Daddy <Ralph>. Null. <laughs> yeah, Daddy Null. <laughs> and according to like Kino Casino and like the A logs and everything, he's living in a shed behind his lawyer's house. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't this be considered like fucking like malpractice from a lawyer standpoint? Like you have to have like uh what is it? The best um the best interest of your client. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know I because don't... technically is he a client right then and there if he's cuz he's also a tenant. And I mean there would be no it's also Mexico, so I'm sure the there may be well, a difference would... in standards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in America, that would be considered like a conflict of interest. Yeah. However, well, the way how it's like playing out right now, because like there are lawyers who've had to put their clients up in safe houses before. Yeah. So like they would be in charge of the care and security of their client on top of their defense. Yep. So I'm I'm just sitting here thinking like this dude could have died because of suffocation due to how he had his head position and everything. Yeah. And the lawyer isn't like, you know, using the spare key to get in and like, try to get him to snap out of it, shut down the stream. Is he, like, is he aware like, of what's going on though? Even I'm pretty sure because the way how Ralph gets, he's within shouting distance. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm fairly certain he has to be on top of like everything that his client is doing because I mean, Ralph has made some serious fuck ups, like he said, <laughs> fake name and everything. Like, I, I, it's just like <laughs> everyone in the world has like abandoned him, and then you got the juxtaposition of Boogie here, where you have Keem and a bunch of fucking troglodytic WWE fans falling for the fucking kayfabe. Yep. Of everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just blows my fucking mind, and then like the whole idea that this is a silent war going on to vie for fucking Jim's attention. <laughs> like this is the most like fucking mismatch fight I've ever seen. So I, I don't know. I just, I kind of feel bad more for Ralph than I do for boogie. Yeah. I don't feel bad at all uh, for heel streaming him by the way. I mean, if anybody knows yeah. what that means, but like I, I might talk about it towards the end of the stream. But yeah, I don't feel bad for heel streaming Boogie right now. And that that's the thing. It's like, I never thought I would get to a position where I would actually feel bad for Ralph until this shit with Boogie went down. And yeah. Now it's, handled. it's infuriating. So, yeah, it, it really yeah, bothers it, me to a different level. And they're just like, yeah. they're, they're now trying to play it off as a game. And it, I think that's pissing me off all the more. Yeah, I mean, like, I would like to see Keen do this for, like, if Boogie even had a child and he abandoned him, like, I would like to see what Keen would do to fucking fix that situation. Yeah. Because at at that point, it, like, shows more, like, how fucking, like, I don't want to say disassociative, but detached Keem is from, like, re real-world sensibilities because yeah. it's YouTube. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to get back to playing this. I don't want to divulge too much right now. Streamed himself on Locale yeah. Live. Getting liar tattooed and comic sans on his face. I'm not sure the size of the script. And I watched this take place live. Um, I don't know shit about tattoos. A lot of people said, is this real? Is this fake? Because that tattoo gun made no noise. Could this be more boogie bullshit? It's possible. It's possible he's trying to pull a fast one and this is some some bullshit scam. Uh, but he's going to have to put this stupid thing on his face every day for the next two years because apparently that's the duration they came to. So it's either a real tattoo, he's got to get laser... It's only two years? ...removed oh, in two years, or it's a fake one Wait, he's going to have to redraw in the... Ex yeah, yeah. Wait, okay, They're saying so he, he can get it removed down. in two years. Okay, if he's going to get it removed, I suggest that he fucking cheese grater. <laughs> I kind of agree with you. <laughs> yeah, none of this laser fucking like no, tattoo no. surgery removal tool shit. No. Cheese grater. Give with me a salt scalpel and a fucking wound. Scalpel and a couple lemons to keep the wound clean. No, I, I, I seriously no no. He should get a rusty cheese grater, put salt in the wound, and let it fucking scar for the rest of his life. Yeah, I don't even want the cheese grater. I want that piece of skin out of him. 
<laughs> Let's send that to St. Jude's. <laughs> Tan it and send it to St. Jude's. <laughs> Every fucking day for the next 700 plus days. In fact, that would almost be the more entertaining option. Because I look forward to A-Logs doing video like analysis. Like CS, uh, CSI level shit on this. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> whatever the fucking show with a guy with the sunglasses. I can't remember what that was. Uh, but like, you know, uh, tech analysis. Did the L move? Did the I move? Did the A move? Did the R move? They're going to be watching that shit like a hawk for two years. So he gets this allegedly, allegedly tattooed onto his face. Uh, you can watch it. it is, this is up on uh, live stream. So you can watch and, you know, come to the conclusion for yourself. Again, I'm not a tattoo. I don't have tattoos. So I don't know. Maybe maybe they have silent tattoo guns now. But, oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if he faked that? After all the shit that's gone on, could you imagine if he faked the punishment? I don't, uh, then, then uh, how would you ever bring him back on? I mean, it's not my fucking, you know, live stream show. This is Keem's wheelhouse. So I guess he's going to do whatever he's going to do. <laughs> but if Boogie faked that, oh, that's going to be disastrous. And if it's real, it's, it's, yeah. So to me, I guess it is funny either way. Because now he's, like, obligated to keep this up for two years. So if it's lie, he's got to live that lie. And he can't ever fuck up or it's going to be catastrophic. And if it's real, he got this shit tattooed on his face. <laughs> it's going to be there for a while. But the thing that really interested me is Keem kept saying on his stream, I'll only bring Boogie back if 70% of the audience agrees to it. If 70% of the people watching, and they had, like, 23, 24,000, they got about 20,000 votes. And the first poll didn't hit 70%. So <laughs> so they redid the poll. They're like, okay, you know, hey, Pookie got this tattoo on his face. He's really apologetic. Um, I don't care. You know, I think we should, we should really, you know, have some mercy on him, have some pity on him. What do you think that second poll result was? No, wait a minute. What do, you, do you think the people were, were merciful to the old bookster? I just thought of some. Instead of under the lip, he should have had it tattooed on his lips. Oh. That way, every time when he opened up his mouth, it would split the word. <laughs> every time when he all. kissed yeah. Desi, every time he kissed Desi, it'd yep. be a lie. Yep. 61%. Not at the 70% threshold. Now, Kiba said, well, I'll, I'll bring you back on. I'll let you back on. But I don't think so. I think you need to be a man of your word, Keem Star. We can't dono scam the audience. <laughs> there, there will be done. 61%, that's not that 70. Boogie's got to find another 9%. He's got to increase that. Now, he's got liar tattooed on his face. That got him 61%. Here's what I think. How do we get that other 9% going, right? Because I want to be helpful. I want to be solution-oriented. A little helper be over here. That's what I like to do. You know, so how do we get that other 9%? So to to his fans, well, yeah. we could do the analog oh, yeah. stream. Well, Keem could. Uh, but that's probably that's probably going to be very arduous. I doubt that's ever going to happen because they're going to they're just going to fucking destroy him if they did that. I think to really make this count, he's got to go to a tattoo artist, one that the audience picks, so we know they're a real tattoo artist with a real tattoo gun. There's no shenanigans. There's no doubt, and get the word tipples tattooed on his fucking forehead, in size <laughs> forty eight font, and I think that would hurt no, him. What do you think? Audience, do you think that that should I do a? It is a should longer get, word. Should I will, should his solution I will that, for that so other nine percent? Got to scale the font nah, down a little. Be, Tipple's forehead it has tattoo. Has to be sixty nine. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know to really to really get him that nine percent. Let's see if that works. Now I know you're thinking, what does tipples mean? I don't fucking know. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> that booking phrase. <laughs> but I think it's good enough. I, I, you know, I think it's one of those things where somebody that's unfamiliar with it would never know what it is, but everybody that knows, knows the second you see this obese man with the word tipples on his forehead in 36 font, you'd be like, oh, it's Boogie. <laughs> I mean, he wants that 9%, right? The, the Trust me, the given is how fat important. Boogie is, his oh, head I'll has to be the size to of a goddamn water. No, I don't have the same yeah, viewership true. going on right now. You can afford the 69. Night. I got nothing exciting going on. We got 14,000 over here. So I'll wait for, let's, let's let the poll go for a while, get some votes calculated and see if the, that, and deliver dominoes for like a week dressed as the Noid. You guys ever see the Noid? That's an old like mascot. <laughs> Jim, you're such a fucking asshole. Oh my boy. God. You're such an asshole, Jim. Like, he would just buy a pair of red footy pajamas with bunny ears. Oh, such a dick. Oh Such a jackass. All right. We got 4,000 votes coming in. 
give it another minute or so. But right now, it's looking like people really do like the Tipple's forehead tattoo idea. <laughs> Sitting right now at a 92% yes. 92% of the audience thinks that well, if he wants that extra extra 9% to really get back on that show, he needs to get Tipple's put on his fucking skull. I'm going to try and catch us back up here. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to fit the whole thing on there, but I don't think we could. I don't think you would actually get the whole fucking thing on there. My mother twitted my tipples. My mother t- twitted my fucking tipples. Oh, his tipples, his sore little tipples. No, 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 wait. I got another oh, one. That- yeah. He should have that sound bite as his fucking ringtone, and then Keem should <laughs> dox his phone number. And every time when he's on stream, people should call Boogie's cell phone, and he has to have it on, like, completely on. No yep. mute. No fucking vibration, just completely on, and people will just like have that playing whenever they yeah. want to fuck with them. Yeah, that'd be fucking great. That's my experience with Boogie. It's been a wild, a week and a half to two weeks of watching this as it imploded, as lie after lie and scam after scam blew up in his face. The reputational damage he's taken. Um, I, I don't know how he's going to undo it. I don't know what arguments he's ever going to win. I don't know how he's ever going to walk back from it. God help him if he ever has something tragic actually happen. Nobody's going to believe him. Even when it comes to this abuse stuff, people are going to doubt because of what they've witnessed happen over the last week and a half. That's that's rough, but that's the situation he put himself in. I don't know if it's like a like a compulsive lying thing. I know they keep throwing out like the term, well, it's covert narcissist. <laughs> it's all these fancy that's psych terms shit. and shit. Yeah. The dude likes to lie. Apparently, just likes to lie about just fucking everything. Uh, Big things, small things, in between things. Doesn't double really matter. 007 meet double O liar. Yeah. Or does it? So, how you walk it back from that, I, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. But I don't think, uh, I don't think there's anything more to cover about him. I mean, that's pretty much all the big ones, isn't it? I mean, what, what else? Like, unless he throws himself off the overpass or goes through with his plan to fight the cops, there's pretty much nothing to talk about. Like, he's, he has, he's shot himself in the foot so many times. I don't know where he goes from here. Uh, but it has been, uh, one hell of an implosion. Uh, and I've been enjoying that. I've been watching all the ALAC videos as they recount it. Because, <laughs> again, they have more teeth. That's what I think would have been the best solution. Really have them on and do like a confrontational thing where they can bring up all the shit and he can defend himself and say whatever his counter is to it. That would have been highly entertaining. Uh, but it had been wild. It had been wild. And I don't know. I don't know if a channel's monetization could handle it. Remember, all the naughty <laughs> words. Well, they'd be dropping some bigger ones. There'd be some end bombs going on. Even his fucking hand holding ruined it. Oh, yeah. 